In this video, we're gonna talk about how to grow rich in your tech career versus being replaced by AI. We're at the point now where AI is changing the tech workplace. AI is creating an incredible number of ultra high paying tech jobs. And at the same time, AI has the potential to kill about 50% of the current tech jobs that are out there. And the key for you to determine what your career is going to look like are going to be the actions and the steps you take now. And this may be the biggest opportunity of your lifetime to really grow your career, or it could be one of the worst times for many people. And I want you to have the best opportunities. And that's why I made this video. Before we really talk about what we're going to talk about, which is what AI can do and what AI cannot do and where you need to be and how to position yourself and what are the right positions and why do they pay so much? I want to show you some statistics so you understand the magnitude of why you need to take this very seriously right now. So Mark Zuckerberg very recently said that in 18 months, all of the coding at Meta will be done by AI and that it will do better work than the engineers that are already working there. Now that sounds interesting by itself, but uh, the Microsoft CEO uh, fairly recently said that 30% of the code at Microsoft is now being written by AI, 30%. At the same time, Google CEO, but this was about nine months ago, I'm sure it's more now, said that uh, AI writes about 25% of their code at Google. So that's a lot. Now, the Shopify CEO recently came out and said that uh, before hiring, we need to, the staffers at uh, Shopify now need to prove that AI can't do the job. So you're seeing uh, businesses are taking this more seriously. And if we look at what AI can do, it's currently better than the bottom 30 to 50% of hands-on IT professionals, which is a big red flag and danger here. Note, I said hands-on and I said IT professionals. So there's a lot of IT jobs that are still safe. But if we understand and really look at it, and we know that AI is currently writing between 25 and 40% of the code at companies like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and others right now, we need to think about what that actually means. So AI can't do a lot of the things in the bigger tech jobs, like an architect, like a cloud architect, security architect, enterprise architect, AI architect, account executive, but it can also do a lot of hands-on things. So let's talk about what AI can do. AI can write code in pretty much any language you desire. AI can do things like infrastructure as code. They can write bash shell scripts for Linux, Windows PowerShell scripts. AI can do some automated Linux management scripts. They can write scripts to configure firewalls, routers, switches. AI can write boilerplate documentation, automate diagramming, you know, simple as is build out kind of diagrams. What it means is AI can really do right now before it gets any better about entry, all the entry level and mid level engineering jobs that are out there, like a cloud engineer. Uh, potentially mid-level software developers, junior level software developers, a lot of the junior level tech careers. So if you're in one of these hands-on tech careers, you've got some serious choices to make. And you really have two options. Option one will be to move to a career that cannot be performed by AI. Now I'm going to tell you right now, for most people, that's going to be the best option. First, they'll probably double their salary by moving out of engineering into one of these careers, and they'll be the safest. Now, option two, if we're dealing with an engineer, is to make sure that they're in the top 25% or better of all engineers. And that's going to be a lot more challenging, and we can talk about what goes into that too to some degree inside of this video. But I'm going to spend the bulk of my time talking about option one. Move to a career that can't be replaced by AI because that's what are going to be most of your demand is, most of your salary is, and uh, most opportunities. So these are the careers, the tech careers that you can't be replaced with AI. Anything that's not hands-on, anything that's person-to-person, -person, leadership sells. So jobs like the cloud architect, a security architect, 
a secure, an enterprise architect, a network architect, an AI architect. None of these jobs can be replaced by AI. Neither can uh, sales executives, like a, an account manager or a global account manager or a business development manager, if you will. Neither can a sales engineer. Neither can a people manager. So if we look at what AI can do and what AI cannot do, let's talk about why, say, the ex architecture careers are so safe. I just picked them. And the reason is, and it's same thing for sales careers, you're doing a lot of these things at the same time and executive leadership. So if I've got, say, a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or even a solutions architect, they're going to be managing stakeholders and vendors. In fact, my architects are going to probably spend 20% of their time going back and forth between stakeholders and having conversations about their business needs and goals and various business architecture components. And then you'll be designing a strategy and presenting it back and forth to the stakeholders, getting their feedback, uh, tuning your architectures, getting their buy-in, that kind of thing. So there's so much uh, coordination with stakeholders and uh, architecture. And in architecture, we're typically going to have 10, 15, 20 vendors, 50 vendors along the way, and we have to coordinate the vendors and what they're providing us as well. So architects do this, and that cannot be done by AI. Now, as an architect, we're giving presentations, uh, we're, getting, we're selling products and solutions. Again, AI can't do it. Again, that's why the sales engineering job is also safe. That's why the sales positions are safe, the leadership positions. So maybe we're creating change management procedures. Maybe we're creating governance structures across the organization, working with the organization and stakeholders to do so. Maybe we're evaluating new technologies to see what they can do for our business. For example, can this technology change a process, change the customer experience, enhance operational efficiency, whatever? And we're spending a lot of time deeply, deeply, deeply analyzing these things at a level of analysis that's above your typical AI. We're typically creating technology roadmaps that are aligning them with business objectives, which again means understanding the business architecture and the value streams and key business processes, and then figuring out, you know, what technology could be used and where it could be used in the organization's value chain. So there's a lot of work that goes into that. Now, typically we're assessing and mitigating risks related to IT and IT processes and IT procedures and IT changes. We may create an architecture review board. We'll be evaluating and selecting technology platforms. We're typically negotiating with vendors along with the rest of the team. We're managing vendor relationships for key IT systems. We're developing disaster recovery and incident response plans. We're developing business continuity plans. We're ensuring we're compliance with industry regulations and standards and and many times even interfacing with uh, legal for these things. So the architecture jobs, all of them are safe. Now, the reason is they are safe is here was the commonality in all of these things. Interacting with people, asking the right questions, learning about the client's needs and goals, building relationships, leading and motivating teams, selling, uh, facilitating meetings, designing incident response procedures, business continuity plans. Every one of those things must be done by a person, not AI. So that's what makes these roles safe. Same thing with sales. Nobody's going to buy a $2 billion technology solution from a robot. They're going to buy it from someone that they know with the company backing them that they trust and they have a good relationship with. That's why even sales engineers, even though they're engineers, are still going to be safe here because they're contributing to sales, which is bringing in revenue for their company, but it's all a person-to-person -person job. So that's why the architect roles, the sales roles, and these roles are very safe. Now, let's also look at some very special things that are part of the architecture role. But they're also part of the safe engineering careers, which are principal engineering and distinguished engineering, meaning the best of the best that can do things that no one can. From an analysis perspective, not from the hands-on doing. AI can do a lot of these things. So this is about expertise. So I want you to understand there's never a best technology. There's no such thing as a best medication. There's no such thing as the best car. There's no best anything. And whether it's cloud architecture or distinguished engineering or enterprise architecture or strategy consulting, all of these jobs are about evaluating trade-offs compared to the organization's needs and understanding the limitations and the breaking points of their deep analysis. They take a lot of knowledge and a lot of people. 
This is expertise. This is professional judgment. So these roles are safe. So the people that are in architecture roles, congratulations, you're safe. The people that are in engineering roles, like cloud engineering, software development, I encourage you to move into a cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, AI architect, or any network architect or any other architecture role if you want to stay still on the tech side to a degree. And if not, move into things like sales or leadership or other things where you're managing more people. Now, you know, most architect roles like a cloud architect, solutions architect, enterprise architect are all paying at least $200,000 per year. But it's not hard to get $400,000 a year in a principal architect or a distinguished architect or a chief architect or some of the enterprise architect roles either. So the key is these roles are high paying. And why is it? Because these roles are about making sure the business is optimized or the business is enhanced by our technology. They're not about building it. They're about using technology as a tool to provide business enhancements. And if your billion dollar architecture can generate $5 billion in new revenue for the business, it's cheap because it paid five times what it actually cost the business as opposed to being expensive, assuming the company's margins are there. So that's what I want you to think of it. All of these architecture roles and all of the high paid distinguished engineering roles are all about optimization, performance tuning, and business enhancement. So if I have an engineer and they're say the, uh, they're on average, they're 50% or below, they really have some decisions to make here. If they stay, chances are they'll be part of the next layoff. So they're good. If they don't move into an architecture career, like I would recommend, the key here is to become great. Now, that means that engineer is going to need to spend some serious time and serious money on professional development. And that's okay. We can we could all need to do what we love. But it means not getting 13x AWS certified. Here's the reason. If you're 13x AWS certified, you spread your time among 13 different people's careers, and now you're in the bottom 15% of 50% of all of them. You, you can, that's with the people that I see being replaced by AI. But the person who used the Cisco certified internet expert has his intro or her intro to networking that then spent years mastering the things that with the intro in the CCIE, for example. Now that's the engineer that's going to be safe because AI is not that good. So now you know the people that will benefit uh, from AI versus the people that will not and how to stay safe. Now, if you'd like to be on a cloud architect or a security architect or an AI architect or a network architect or any other kind of architect, why don't you join me in a free architecture webinar? We hold one every week. They're completely free. They're live ones in and you can sign up on the description of this video. We'll go over the architecture careers. We'll talk about what we do in these roles, the skills you need in these roles, and it'll be live and free on Zoom. So you can ask me any question and we can talk about it live. The link is in the description of this video. Now, while you're in the description of this video, you'll see other free eBooks on how to win the interview for your next tech job, for example, or the skills you need for a cloud architect career or an enterprise architect career or an AI architect career. Uh, sign up and get them emailed to you. They're all free. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, network architect, or any other type of architecture career.